they just bought a new bike, or maybe not. Anyway, you have no idea about all these knobs that you have on your fork or rear shock, what they are doing. Well, in this video, I will explain everything you need to know about them. I don't want to bother you with too much complexity, but if you want to fine tune your fork or uh, in general, your suspensions, you need to know some basics. So first of all, you need to know what the movements of compression and rebound are. The concepts are the same uh, for the fork as well for the rear shock, but for my explanation, I will just use my fork. The fork basically makes two movements. When you're hitting some obstacles on the ground, could be roots, stones, whatever, uh, the fork makes a compression of the lower leg into these tensions, and after the hit, you will have a decompression of the lower leg into the original position. So with the compression knobs, you are going to regulate how much resistance do you want to add in the compression movement. Instead, with the rebound knobs, you are going to regulate the speed of the decompression movement. So how fast the lower leg will reach again the original position. Talking about compression knobs, the first thing to say probably is that we are talking about fine tuning. You should be aware that if you have wrong pressure inside the fork or you have wrong pressure on the tires, working on the compression knobs will not give you a huge difference because anyway, the feeling of the fork will be anyway messy if you have some of these settings already off. My suggestion is to start already with the suggested settings that the manufacturer of the fork or um, rear shock we already suggest to you. Then you can use your feeling and your expertise time after time uh, in order to deviate from the standard and actually feel much better your needs. In my case, my Fox 38 factory has two compression knobs, one that will regulate the low speed compression and the other one that will regulate the high speed compression. Now, first thing to say, we are talking about compression speed, but speed here has nothing to do with the speed you are going to have on, on the trail. In this case, the speed is referring to the sides of the impact. The, that means that if you are going to face stones or roots on the ground, this will impact only the first third of the travel of your fork, so the initial length of your travel. Instead, if you are going to um, face a one or two meter drop, you are supposed to use mostly all of your travel. So that means also the other two thirds of the travel. This is exactly the distinction between the low and high speed compression. So the low speed compression knob will regulate the resistance that you are going to add in the initial part of the travel of your fork. Instead, the high speed compression knob will regulate the resistance that you are going to add in the upper travel of your fork. The rebound is in my eyes a crucial setting that you have to fine tune. Otherwise, the performance of your fork will be uh, very messy. And in some cases, for example, in the jumping could be also dangerous. If we want to somehow find an universal rule for the rebound, it's kind of possible to define that. And the rebound should be the fastest possible without giving you the impression that the bike is kicking you. For example, in the rear shock that is kicking your ass, somehow, or in the case of the fork, that actually it's kind of unstable and it's not giving you confidence on these small bumps, for example. Also in this case, I have two knobs uh, to, in order to regulate the rebound of my fork. This is actually not common. Usually you will have only one rebound knob that will regulate the rebound on the entire travel. In this case also, I have a low speed rebound knob and a high speed rebound knob. The concept is exactly the same we found in the compression knobs. That means that with the uh, low speed rebound knob, you are going to regulate the returning speed of the first part of the travel of your fork. And with the high speed rebound knob, you are going to regulate the returning speed of the upper travel of your fork. There is no uh, universal rule for tuning these kind of uh, settings because this depends on your weight or the sag that you are going to regulate at the beginning actually or uh, from your riding style your feeling this is something that you have to change one or two clicks uh, per time on a on the same trail 
and do some kind of experiments and check your impressions. This is also depending on which kind of ground you are going to ride. A setup, I don't know, for DH lines is definitely different from a flow line or jump lines completely. Because if I'm going to set up uh, my suspensions in order to perform better in a DH line, of course I will lose a little bit in the uh, flow lines because in the berm I won't have this support that the suspension should have, but instead the suspension will, will just go inside the travel, so I will lose a little bit of uh, power uh, going out the berms, for example. Actually, also the speed is a key factor. This requires a proper explanation. Why I'm saying that? Because if you are going to 30 km per hour, the impact on a stone will be different if you are going to 10 km per hour. For example, for the rebound, imagine to have two stones and one meters uh, from each other. If your rebound is too slow, if you are going at 10 km per hour, for example, this is not a problem because in the space between the two stones, the suspension will be able to recover and re-extend it to its uh, original position. But if you are going at 30 or 35 km per hour, could be that in the moment you hit the second stone, then the, the suspension are not still in the original position, and then you are basically increasing the possibility to bottom out during the trail. Something else to say, this could require some time. Uh, it's not like after one or two rides you are going to find the perfect setup, this is something that you will experience in, a, in many rides after you will really get used to the sensation of, the, uh, of what the suspension are giving to you. In the next videos, I will tell you exactly how I did the process of setup of my suspensions. So if you found this video useful, of course, leave a like and consider to subscribe to the channel to not lose the next video. If you have some questions, of course, that I didn't cover in this video, just let me know in the comments. In the meantime, have fun and see you on the trails.